Guys, it's Reed, aka Shooter here. We've got a pretty cool hand for you guys. Uh, my friend sent this one to me. We end up playing a re raise pot out of position with pocket kings. So we're pretty deep stacked, and as you guys can see, we start out by re raising the button opener. We're about 140 big blinds effective here. So, uh, yeah, let's check out what happens after that. It looks like the, the big blind folds and the button ends up calling, which we expect him to do with a pretty wide range here. We go ahead and continuation bet this flop, which is kind of drawy, um, maybe has like 10 nines or five four suited or just random floats, uh, jack 10 type of stuff could potentially peel one and see a turn here. So uh, in addition to that, you know, it's a pretty good board for us to continuation bet on because a lot of his hands like King Jack or King Ten or Ace Two suited have uh, kind of a tough time continuing here. So to combat that, we expect this player is going to continue and see the turn with a pretty wide range here. Uh, that said, it's still pretty good for us to bet because we're talking about offsuit combos of hands that completely whip this board like Queen Ten. Uh, this guy's going to have a lot of them considering how small we re raised and how deep we are pre flop. So we get called on the flop. Like we said, uh, it's a pretty wide range of hands that does that. Now here's the interesting part. The turn is a nine. So it brings a flush draw, which is nice because maybe it, it, we can represent some diamonds and value bet a little bit thinner, expect to get called by a nine for sure. Um, but the thing is, if we do bet, we can expect a lot of his slightly worse hands, um, hands like you know queens and jacks and tens probably call again on the turn. But hands like ace queen or ace jack or four or five, maybe even he floated the flop with a, a king queen of spades, those are almost all certainly folding. But if we do check, maybe those hands like pocket tens, jacks, and queens are going to go ahead and bet into us twice. So we can make kind of a tricky play here, a little bit exploitable, and check the turn and expect to get bet into by a pretty wide range. Now also, it's important that we consider the river here, because pretty much on any river, if we bet and we're called on the turn and shove the river, it's going to be very difficult for our opponent to call us with anything, probably, you know, jacks or worse, and, you know, we're sitting here with kings, so it's not like we're getting value from that many hands, but he is betting a ton of hands into us if we check. Uh, again, you know, if we check, we can represent a weaker hand. Like maybe we have a hand, uh, like a random seven, like seven six suited or ten seven, or maybe we hit the nine with an ace nine type hand, something like that. So we can underrepresent our hand and expect him to go for thin value with a worse hand. So we uh, we pick off some bluffs if he's going to decide to bluff us with an ace high, and we also get him to value about worse. Whereas if we bet, he's going to play better against our range or our hand and uh, the river is going to be pretty nasty. So we do end up betting. Uh, the river is a complete blank, a two of spades. And here um, my friend kind of gets freaked out and checks because it is kind of a rough spot. Then uh, this player goes all in. So at the time, uh, my friend told me his read was that this guy was re-raising uh, hands like pocket tens and better preflop. And I'm not sure if that read applies to um, how deep we are. Like most players don't really re-raise uh, pocket tens over a, a re-raise when we're this deep just because they're pretty worried what would happen if we go all in. Um, when you know when you get a hand like pocket tens in pre-flop in a position like this with stacks like this, a lot of times you're not that good without some crazy history. So from what my friend told me, I'm not sure if this guy would have a hand like pocket tens to call the turn with, but once we check betting a hand like pocket tens here is almost certainly too thin because our range just seems like it's complete air or um you know we're we're doing some weird trappy type thing here with a hand maybe like pocket kings so betting pocket tens doesn't really make too much sense it's probably best that he just takes the showdown um so when he shoves it's uh pretty optimistic that we have the best hand here unless he's going for really thin value with exactly jacks or queens like we said he probably re-raises those pre-flop himself so um, uh, we do end up folding and I really can't fault him for that I think uh, it's just a, a pretty gross spot so uh, if you guys like this hand 
feel free to tweet it and share it with your friends. I've got a link in the description below. My Twitter account is Shuda. You can see the button up on the screen here. And if you guys want me to check out a hand that you've played, go ahead and send it to the email address also on the screen. I hope you guys like this hand, and I'll see you next time. Bye.